Hello and welcome to Newsnight. I am Ladi Akiri Duluale. It's our pleasure to have you join us. My guest on the program today believes that Nigeria's development would continue to be seriously challenged because it is keeping more than half its adult population from participating actively in politics and governance. My guest also thinks that women in politics must be more focused on the objectives of parity and equity in the political arena. Newsnight talks to the chairperson of the Women in Politics Forum, Mrs. Abere Ifendu. Mrs. Ifendu, thank you for your time. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Let me begin by asking you what it's been like, the area that you've chosen to spend a great deal of time, women in politics, um, and the forum that you now uh, run and lead. I, I wonder if you've not found it a very uphill task, as some people would say, uh, given our own environment. What's, what's it been like? Uh, for me, it's been very interesting with all the challenges. Um, don't forget, uh, we are as Africans, our society is a patriarchal society, and uh, women are just you know, trying to come up now, especially in politics. Um, I see what I'm doing as something that is necessary to be done to support women. We have women who really want to participate in politics, who naturally do not know how and where to start from. And that's what the forum is about. What we do is to build the capacity of women, support them, and uh, encourage them to join any political party of their choice, work with them all through you know, uh, their political um, career to ensure that they, have, uh, they, they, they get the necessary support and voice that is needed you know, to tread in the political environment. Um, yes, we faced a lot of challenges. Um, people misunderstand us at times, but uh, they turn around to really understand that what we do is just to ensure that there's inclusion in governance. So for Women in Politics Forum, we support also the persons living with disabilities because we have our women who are living with disabilities and who are also interested in politics. So this forum is a forum that any woman that is interested in politics should be part of because we give every kind of support, starting from registration with, uh, to a political party, um, helping you with the rules of the game, understanding uh, party constitution, understanding internal party democracy, understanding um, what it takes you know, to be a member of a political party. Most times you see women as cheerleaders and not card carrying members of any party. And so after elections, the men will not see the need to even support them, especially not being financial members of the party. And so you see women come around to complain, uh, we worked for him, we supported him, and he's not uh, you know, uh, giving us back uh, kind of uh, recipe, the exactly. Yeah. And this is because most times they are not even recorded as members of the party. And so it will be difficult for that person that you supported actually to you know, turn around to help you. So these are some of the things we do. And when we build the capacity of women, and these women go out to contest the election, they understand what it takes. And they go there with you know, the enthusiasm that you know, they are going to contest and you know, contest to win, actually, not just to contest, because there are two things. You just want to have your name on the ballot and then maybe use it to you know, talk about, oh, some years ago, I contested. You know. But these women go out to contest and to win. And we have very strong women that are doing that now. And I'm well, very excited that the organization is doing well in that direction. There are not that many, uh, obviously. Yes, um, there are not. But someone suggested to me that it's um, a fairly simple thing. Mm -hmm. It may sound simplistic. Mm -hmm. uh, given what we know about Nigeria's population, there are more women than there are men. Yes. Um, and that if women form the block, mm -hmm. that it will be impossible to defeat any woman candidate 
regardless of the position they were applying for. Because all, if all she got were the women in whatever community she was representing, <laughs> yeah. it was enough. And that the problem seems to be with galvanizing that group to support female candidates. Is this true? Yes, I agree with that. And uh, I'll have to be honest with you, you know, women are just coming up in politics. And um, politics is not only just a game of numbers. Finance also is very important. But what we are doing now is supporting ourselves. We have started working with the grassroots. We have started going, you know, closer to the right down, you know, to the grassroots women. These women started life believing that um, we are not expected to rule or govern as a woman. And so the men will use that always. Religion also plays a great role in this direction. Our pastors, our imams, our traditional religious people, they keep you know, putting it out there that women are not supposed to lead. And so if you come out to lead, it becomes a problem. And then I always say this, that women are victims of our society, our patriarchal society. But gradually, we are beginning to break those bounds. Gradually, we are beginning to do that. i give you an example. PDP just had their convention. And Hajia Enachiroma came out to contest for deputy national chairman, not. Nigerian women, women in PDP, women, women in civil society, generally gathered and contributed money and bought her nomination forms for her. And she contested to the end. The party actually had a consensus candidate. And the Nigerian women felt, no, there can't be consensus. We must have this woman contest this election with all the party leaders telling her to step down for the consensus candidate. She said no, because truly highly qualified. The consensus candidate, of course, being a man. Being, of course, you hardly find them bring out a woman as a consensus candidate, hardly. So she refused, she contested, and she scored almost 500 votes against a consensus candidate. That will tell you that for the first time, you know, women gathered, looked at her, and saw her as somebody with capacity, somebody who will go there and represent our interests. And of course, what they were targeting actually was the 35% affirmative action in PDP constitution. But you know that even when it's in their constitution, political parties will still not obey it. And at that time, Women in Politics Forum came up. We had a press conference. We wrote to PDP and we told them that you have a constitution. You must obey that constitution. And we challenged PDP. We have just briefed our lawyers. We are going to court with PDP, against PDP. Because we need to understand what it means to have a constitution, a legal document, and an organization or a political party is not respecting it. We are dragging our neck into it also. This is because for a political party to get registered, an organization to get registered as a political party, you will submit, one of the documents you submit to INEC will be your constitution and your manifesto. And based on that, you get registered and you become a political party, no longer an association. And then a political party, it's not just about PDP. It's in all the political parties as we speak in Nigeria. They have no respect for their documents. There is no respect for internal democracy. Because I was going to say that this one that you have started with this court case, you are probably going to end up with a lot of court cases. Yes, we are ready. We are ready. We are already in court with the federal government. Yes, because We're ready. that yes. is also... We are already in court. Uh, because they On are the not 24th, we are we are 24th, you also will also be in court. It started since last year. We have the Nigeria Agenda Policy. And the federal government is not obeying it. We have the constitution that talks about equality. And nobody is talking about it. We have a federal character that is not representing gender. So all these things we've put together. We have done a lot of advocacy. 
The truth is that we want to try it out the legal way. It happened in Senegal. They got judgment. And we are very optimistic that we will get judgment in Nigeria. Because I tell you that for us to have more women participate in politics, for us to have inclusion, for us to have genuine democracy, we must have a legal backing. The Constitution talking about women's political participation. The National Assembly, they are working towards amendment of the Constitution, the Electoral Act and the rest. We sent in our proposals. We also were at the national uh, hearing, both at uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives. We have bills that are before them. We have the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill. Every parliament, every parliament will come up with, oh, I mean, we are going to pass the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill. They have even made us to water it so down for them to still, uh, you know, for them to pass it. Is still something that will pass first reading, second reading, but we have been strategic about it now. We've invited men to talk about it. We've asked the Senate uh, President, through Senator Olujimi, to be you know, one of the signatories to the bill now. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the National Assembly also, we have the special seats for women. We are also looking at having uh, affirmative action enshrined in the Constitution. So uh, we also have another bill sponsored by um, the Deputy Senate President on appointive positions for women. He uh, talked about at the state level, 40% women representation uh, and then uh, national level, 30%. So these bills are bills that highly you know respected people are uh, sponsoring the extra seat is uh, sponsored by senator uh, sorry um, right honorable uh, nkiru konye georgia who is the deputy whip and uh, with the speaker also as a co you know sponsor the bill. as you are saying all of this what is at the top of my mind yes. <laughs> is that I can remember when, I believe it was this Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill, yes. when it was presented at the Senate. Yeah. On the day it was presented, uh, I looked around, Senator Olujimi and a couple of other female senators, but they were completely overwhelmed by the men the, in terms of number. And when it came to the voting, quite naturally, they were defeated. So I, I am, I'm wondering if these various initiatives as possibly laudable as they are and so on, without the numbers mandated already, it might still be, it might still prove to be an impossible task. Because if you take a look at the list, um, at the Senate, mm -hmm. I, the number of female senators are less than 10. Yes. At the House of Reps is an equally small number compared to the number. Exactly. At the level of the federal government, the number of female ministers, the state assemblies, the state executive councils, and so on. And so I'm wondering if this is uh, not something the women are supposed to now confront, uh, even possibly in terms of protesting, because it seems as if the men are prepared for all the legal methods. But the women saying that, look, we're not going to take this, you know, uh, as some in other countries that you mentioned have said, um, before the Rwandan president, the current one, yes. came into office. Oh, he had right. a similar situation exactly. to Nigeria. There are more women now in the parliament. Yes, they are, they are leading the world, actually. They, they have more women ministers and so on. South Africa, uh, of course, let's not mention the Scandinavian countries where yeah. that had always so, been the case. They've had true. prime ministers back to back to back to back who are women. Um, I'm wondering if at our own level here in Nigeria, because you see evidence that the women want to do this, but they can't. Okay, that's why we are talking about legislation. Legislation. And uh, initially, you know, we actually thought it was something that we could do on our own without engaging the men. So, you know, after every circle, We'll get back, analyze, look at you know those things that we didn't get right, 
and then begin to work around it. So now we have men supporting our cause. Do you? Yes, we do. We do have men supporting our cause. I just mentioned to you that um, Deputy Senate uh, President brought up a bill supporting appointed positions for women. And I told you also that the Speaker of the House of Representatives is a co-sponsor of the additional seats for women that will give us extra 111 seats at the state and national parliament. We also have our allies, very strong allies. We have the uh, Senate Minority Leader, Senator Abaribe also, who has been a very strong ally and a voice also supporting our cause. So right now we have men who come up to speak for us. We started a radio program, The Constitution We Want, a kind of, you know, talking about it, creating awareness. And each time a call-in program, men will tell us, look, this time women should come out. Men are already tired of what is happening in the country. We mentioned Fellow Rwanda. <laughs> I don't want to say that. I, well, I'm saying it because <laughs> that's what you're saying. <laughs> we, we, just talk, we just talked about Rwanda. And you have seen the level of development in Rwanda. It didn't just come just like that. It came because women are known to be sympathetic and empathic in certain situations. This is a country that came out from a huge genocide. Within a short space of time, they've transformed to a world destination. Americans go there to have conferences. Nigerians, Africans, generally, people who troop to Rwanda. It's a huge tourist place. And I tell you again, they didn't take away the identity. Because once you get to Rwanda, they want you to see the genocide uh, museum. They have their story. As, you, as you're speaking, I also come to think about women as a block. Yeah. And developing that block. Virtually every political party in Nigeria has a women's wing, led by a women leader or something no, it's like not that. A, not a women's league, but just um, uh, that office of a woman leader. Who is leading the other women in the party? Well, in the true sense of it, no. Because it's not a league like, like what we have in South Africa, like the ANC, where the wing is independent and can take decisions on their own. But in Nigeria, she's just a member of the National Working Committee of the party. And, and in so, many instances, she's probably the only woman. That's it. So we don't have a league. It's part of what we are you know, advocating for, for political uh, parties to have a strong league so that women will have their voice, will have their section. Like uh, in South Africa, like I just mentioned, ANC, Winnie Mandela played a huge role using the ANC the Women uh, League of ANC. So we don't have such structure in Nigeria. It's just the position of a woman leader. But who, are, we, are we working towards building such a structure? We are working towards that. But you know, like, uh, we have to be honest, uh, men started politics in Nigeria. They are enjoying uh, everything that is, you know, good and bad in politics. And they do not want to let go of certain you know, powers that they have. So it's difficult um, getting men to accept some of these things. So the much they can do is, like they keep telling us, uh, okay, we'll give you affirmative action, we'll look at the oppositions that we'll give to women. Give. Yes, because the person give. I spoke to this morning said sometimes the presentation is also not That's it. That when when that men sound patronizing when But they, that's what when, it is. That's what it is. And you know they will give. remind you that you are a woman. And I don't understand when, you know, um, people are talking about sensitive issues and then they are bringing up your gender. I think I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right at all. But let me let me interrupt you and ask about the I, uh, so it was described as an antithesis in the mm. sense that on one hand we're talking about quotas and reserved seats and mm. so on. On the other hand we're talking about parity, which 
presupposes that everybody is contesting on a level playing field yeah. and so on. Yeah. Is it that we first of all have to have the quotas mm -hmm. for a period That's before it. we now are able to introduce parity. the parity? That's it. That's what it is. If it is that, yes. the quotas are not yet in place. They are, not they are there legally in some cases. In some cases, yes. But, but they are not there. People are not there at yes. the moment. No, no, people are not there. Women I mean, are women there. are not there. Women, we, 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 women are ready to take up those positions. Let's, I, I, just, I just said that, you know, at one uh, event, and I told them, I said, look, patriarchy is also a form of affirmative action. That's what people don't understand. As a boy, as a man, you already have an upper hand in certain situations. Religion is behind you. Culture is behind you. And then even within the home also, you are seen as a higher person. That's patriarchy. That's giving an extra mileage to a boy and to a, a man. So when, the people, when people talk about affirmative action as something that is not supposed to be heard, and I ask them, what is patriarchy? It's a form of affirmative action. Now look at it in another way. When we talk about quota, it's just for something that, you know, is time bound. We can say for electoral circle. This is just for us to have an opportunity to bring the women apart and then that will be removed. It's not a permanent thing. It's just that in Nigeria, when uh, people you know, talk about affirmative action, they see it as women coming to take their, you know, has, uh, there's nothing we are taking away. We want to contribute. The economy is not doing well now. There's so much insecurity. And people do not see that, even when you know, committees are set up to look at um, security situations in, 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 the, in the country, they don't even think of bringing women. We are natural mediators. We are natural mediators. We are not able to enjoy the benefits of democracy because women are not participating. You can't put down half of the population and think that you can reason it out for women. Men are nice people, they are good people, but they are not women. They can't speak and they can't do things for us. We are the people that can speak and do things for ourselves, and we are ready to do it. But good, good thing that is happening for us now is that the women in the grassroots, we have been able to reach them using our network, uh, the Women in Politics Forum, the 100 Women Lobby Group, the Nigeria Women Trust Fund, Women Radio. We, are, we have come together, and um, we have We Manifesto, we have come together to look at areas, you know, that we can work together as a group. We are no longer working in silos now. So it's easier for us now to reach out to the media, reach out to grassroots women. Uh, 100 Women Lobby Group started a mapping of um, uh, community leaders. Elector came up with an idea to fund and support women to get, uh, you know, to get funds to get uh, elected into office. So you see that different organizations are doing different things and I'm working in collaboration. So right now, we, we have also identified through the work of uh, Women Radio that we need to have men come out now to speak and to pledge to support women. They are doing it and uh, hopefully the National Assembly to ensure that all the bills before them will be passed before 2023 elections for their own good. Otherwise, have, women will withdraw support. Now we have younger women that are not as patient as we have been. And so these girls are ready to mobilize even the older people. So at this point now, it's better for these men to give, like they usually will say, give us. To do the right thing by ensuring that the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill is passed, the Extra Seat Bill is passed, the Appointive uh, Position Bill is passed, and every other bill 
that will affect women's political participation. Otherwise, otherwise, it's no longer going to be Uhuru for them. Look at what happened in Anambra State. Yes. Women refused to collect money. They refused to take money to vote. They said, mm -mm. they were not going to collect anything. They were going there to vote their conscience. And it's something that is, you know, playing out around Nigeria now. What men did was to popularize women. So they come around with their peanuts, stipends, as little as uh, sachet, homo, uh, detergent in a sachet, indomie and stuff like that. And women will say, ah, my children will eat. But we have given them the assurance that if they do the right thing, by voting the right people, especially voting for women, they will have things you know, uh, done for them that will benefit them, not just as an individual. Now, these women will no longer collect their stipends to vote. They are already seeing themselves as fulfilled individuals. This is what we are doing in women in politics. We want to make sure that no Nigerian woman will take money to vote the wrong person. What we are going to achieve in 2023 is this. In fact, before 2023, because the Kitty election is coming up. So is also. So is also. And right now, we have about eight women that already picked the PDP for to run as governors. And these are not pushovers. But I'm sorry, again, I have to cut in here and, uh, and ask. Patriarchy, as you said at the, near the beginning of the interview, women have been victims of patriarchy. But the argument goes that women have also been perpetrators, perpetrators of, yes. uh, of, of, of patriarchy. Uh, and that if they weren't active participants, it wouldn't have lasted that long. Um, and I, uh, I've been given a very easy example. The issue of widowhood. Yes. Um, and what happens to widows when their husbands die, even when they are not suspected of any foul play. The cultural practices that accompany the transition period uh, for a widow are very dehumanizing. They're very embarrassing. I agree with you. But, incidentally, it is women who implement it. Yes. The women, the men are not part of the implementation. Are you not seeing them as victims of society? You mean those who are implementing? Yes. How? Ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance, I tell you. But we have organizations now in the Southeast because this in scenario we just painted is predominantly in the Southeast. We have an organization like WACO. What they do is to ensure that no woman, no woman will be dehumanized. It's now something that, you know, um, once you are faced with that kind of situation, you get Wako to support you. FIDA is also doing that. So these women that you're talking about that are perpetrators actually are people that do not know any better. You know, like growing up in a community and you see, you've witnessed it from your great grandparents and things like that. So what we are doing now is for organizations to go down to different you know, uh, communities working with the traditional rulers, because most traditional rulers themselves are no longer in support of those archaic uh, you know, uh, customs. So do not blame these women. I actually have a kind of um, you know, feelings for them. I pity them when you, you, you wallow in ignorance. So they are victims of society. They are victims of patriarchy. But it's something that gradually will fizzle out. I don't see this happening again in the next uh, 10 years because it's already like, you know, something that uh, most communities are no longer, you know, doing. Remember that initially, in fact, I just heard uh, most recently that uh, a community in Abu Jaif city here, that they still practice um, uh, uh, this um, um, killings of, uh, what do they call them, twins. Twins, right. Yes, it's still existing in F city. You'll be so shocked. Action Aid is working in that area now to support that community. So, you know, um, this, some of these things are things that 
gradually will fizzle out. Women are becoming more knowledgeable. We have asked the uh, religious leaders to speak about it, uh, traditional rulers to speak about it. We have also asked um, uh, women groups also. So the awareness is there. Uh, and you know, some of these perpetrators, when it gets to their children, that's when they begin to, you know, reason it out. Like, of course, you will do it, and then next time is your child that becomes a young widow. And then you realize, oh, so it's something that will end. They're just, but I want you to understand that they're just victims of patriarchy and victims of the society. The other thing I uh, want to raise has to do with finance, because mm. that's another big stumbling block. I mean, if everything else were put in place and women are given the level playing field, and I think to some extent it has been said that this was the reason why some of the parties, uh, whenever it is time for the election cycle, all women who want to pick up forms and uh, uh, want to participate are asked not to pay the nomination fees because it is recognized that they may not as, uh, be as financially empowered as the uh, uh, men. Is that helpful? No. Why? Good. Have you taken the statistics of women that picked forms across all the political parties? I'll give you an example. Last election, 2019, 2,970 women contested elections and just 67 women got elected. Now the truth is this. When they are giving free forms, they will have to face internal democracy that is not in any political party. You begin to hear consensus. I just talked about a consensus candidate. And you think that a political party will concede to a woman that didn't pay for her forms against a man that brought in millions. Don't forget, political parties don't get subvention from the government. And so they make their money from sale of forms. And then they will give that form to a woman free. And a man will come with 20 million, 25 million. Most political parties now for gubernatorial ticket is about 25, 27 million. That man will pay for that form, for the form. And you expect that party to concede and give it to a woman. That's when you hear them talk about zoning. You will hear that, oh, we would have loved you know, to give you the ticket, but it's not zoned to you or to your area. So it, even the, the, the franchise, uh, disenfranchising us with free forms. And I, I encourage women, if you want to play politics, play politics. Go buy your forms. Pay for it. When they talk about consensus, you will challenge them. Because in every political party guidelines, you will never see them talk about consensus. Even zoning. It's not stated anywhere. Zoning is not stated anywhere. And that's why they can play around it. How about the other argument, though, that, uh, uh, like you are, um, married women face the challenge also of state of origin. Um, you are born, you are from this state. You marry a man from another state. Oh, yeah. You move to that state, as has happened in the past. You move to that state, you start working there. Then when it's time for the preferment, they say, well, actually, you are not from here. Yeah. You should go back to your original state. Yeah. When you go back to your original state, people there say, ah, but you've married. You left. And we don't know you. Ah, we, you are not part of us anymore. You are part of the other community. It, it, how is this to be challenged? How is this to be tackled? Yeah, but the good thing is that um, if you've been following you know, events, like especially within the judiciary. Yes. It's happened in uh, Cross River State. And the NJC stood firm and forced the governor to ensure that the highest ranking judge becomes the chief, chief judge. judge. In politics also, I think even in River State, there was no complaint. The governor just followed suit and ensured that the highest you know, member of the judiciary 
uh, of the yes become the chief judge. The truth is that it's all these things we talk about is men not wanting to be displaced. They don't want to be displaced. So they will continue to come up with, and that's also what we have asked them, part of what we requested that the constitution should state clearly. Let the constitution be clear on that issue. That requires an amendment though. But this is a season of amendment that is going on. So everything we want now, we give them a full package. The Constitution and the Electoral Act, sections to be amended for certain things, you know, not to be uh, 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 ambiguous anymore. So we need the Constitution to guide us in some of these things. We need legal pronouncements also to guide us. The Supreme Court just recently tackled the issue of inheritance. When they said no, a girl child shall inherit her parents. It's there now. Nobody can go against it. Although I'm being told that in practice, even though that is there, in practice it is... It's not about time. practice. It's about judicial judgment. No, what I and mean And so is, in practice, because yes. there's a, a, a judgment now, if you want to disinherit me, I will go to... I'll sue you. We'll go to court. And there's a Supreme Court judgment. And definitely... I will get judgment. So that's why, for me, I talk about constitution. I talk about legislation. Well, you are a lawyer, I talk so about you know because these are things that will support our cause. How about the argument, though? That I mean, we've talked about a lot of the hindrances and how to tackle them, but there's still one which I hope I don't sound in any way patronizing when okay. I say this, okay. which is that. Women are said to be their own greatest enemies when it comes to the advancement of some of their representatives. That women seem to particularly take umbrage at fellow women when they seek advancement. That otherwise, especially in our own environment, with the support of women alone, any woman aspiring in virtually every community should get elected on that basis alone if there are not some women playing the other card. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy. Who want to come out to play politics, they will bring up that. In fact, somebody, a woman actually called me and said, they have started. I said, eh, how, what? And she said, look at the Kitty State, eight women. Why did they all go to big farms? Really? And men will come out over 20, 30. How many men in uh, Anambra State picked forms for election? Nobody saw it as uh, men not supporting men. It's politics. When it affects men, it's politics. And when we try to come up as politicians, it becomes women not supporting women. So it's very sad for me because I don't, the, the, the way we judge women, it's not right. And that's why I always talk about this patriarchy thing. How do we even break it? I think the major thing we should be looking at is how do we break patriarchy? Because if we're able to break patriarchy, we'll be okay. This is politics we are talking about. And then somebody thinks that because I'm a woman, and of course I have shown interest to contest a, uh, you know, for a particular position, no other woman should contest. And once another woman you know, shows interest, it becomes that we don't support ourselves. And what we tell women is, understand politics and play by the rules. We are not saying that just give us a position because we are women. No, we will fight for that position. We will work towards it. We will contest and we will win. We don't want people to see us as people without spine. No, we can get it done. So for me, I know that we love ourselves. I know that when it comes to politics, there are usually different um, camps. There are different un beliefs, understanding, and things like that. And besides, my mentor told me something. He said to me, you are an activist, Iberi. You are not a core politician. Politics is not a very politics is interest. 
interest. And that's what I want women to understand. And that actually was what helped me in politics. Each time I, you know, I tried to take a step, I will remember his words. Interest and not passion and not activism. It means that you play by the rules. So for me, we love ourselves. We come together. We, when we support men and when we sing and dance, we are shady for them. How come they don't see uh, the division amongst us? It's only when we take a step to you know, get, get to a higher position that they see us as not loving ourselves. By the way, we have Wimbies that is coming up strongly to support women in politics. And that's an interesting thing for us because we are breaking the barrier of financial handicap. So 2023 will be an interesting year. Finally, I, I, I want to ask about the, how others are doing it elsewhere. I mean, some of the examples that I came across in my uh, research, mm. you've already given one example, which is Rwanda. Yeah. But if we limit it even to the African continent, you have countries like Senegal, South Africa, yeah. uh, even Somalia, which yeah. is war torn. Yes. Uh, also has Ethiopia. They have large numbers yes. of. Uh, so women. how did they achieve it? Yes, that would be the question I'll ask you. Legislation, 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 affirmative action, quota system. Go through all. Oh. And, and that is what we are adopting. In Senegal, right. they fought for a long time to achieve affirmative action. They were not getting it anywhere. So they decided to leave affirmative action and work towards parity. And the first step they took was to challenge the constitution, the equality that is in the constitution, interpretation of the word equality. And the Supreme Court gave them judgment. They didn't get affirmative action, but they got parity. They are over 42% now in parliament. And this is because women are still coming up to occupy 50-50. But they have parity. And that gave us the strength. That's why we are in court with the federal government. Because you want to achieve the same end result. And we're going to achieve it. We're going to achieve it. Can I tell you that this constitution, 1999 constitution, people say it's a fraud. For us women, oh no. Bigger than a fraud. Even where there's interpretation clause, they didn't as much as say that where you find he should be taken to mean he or she. And so in that constitution, nothing to represent us, apart from section 27 that talked about a married woman. A married woman. And once you are a married woman, it means that even an underaged married woman is seen as somebody who can. Do you understand what I'm saying? So anywhere there's uh, um, you know, an opportunity for us to move, we are strangled by the Constitution. We have a section of this country that they believe that once a woman gets to poverty, she can get married, even when she's below 18 years when she cannot vote and when she cannot be voted for. And because she's a married woman. And we're against that. We fought it severally, but this amendment will, ens will ensure. We're no longer begging, actually. We're no longer begging. That's the simple truth. Yes, we are becoming very confrontational now. Because we know that no man no man that ever won an election in Nigeria got there without the support of women. Not even the president. Nobody. So we are ready now to determine our future. And how we are going to do it is what the men will help themselves by ensuring that the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill, the extra seats and the appointive bills and all the other bills that will affect our interest as women that they hurriedly pass them before 2023 because it's going to be a determining year. So many, of, so many of them, so many of them will not get back. We have also told them, anytime there's going to be a vote on any of our bills, it must be done publicly. We want to know people that are for and against us so that we'll be able to pay every man with his own coin. 
I know I said finally, but I must ask this as well. If we get to a stage like we have said in some of the countries where women are now 60%, 70%, in some cases 75% of all the elective positions, parliament, executive, sometimes even the judiciary, would it be fair to refer to that as reverse discrimination? No, no, no. For us, what we are asking for is parity. We are saying that no gender should occupy more than a certain uh, percentage. percentage. But do you know that gradually it will get to that point? And I, because I told a friend of mine, a politician, I said, people are not supporting us. By the time we'll get this, people will be the ones begging for affirmative action. So it's better now that you... <laughs> Which is why I referred to the issue of reverse discrimination. That is, what is happening to No, we will now? not discriminate. We will not discriminate. We will make sure that it will be a level playing field. We will pass through it, so we are not going to subject our children, they are our sons, our husbands, our friends, you know. So we are going to make them feel comfortable. But if I have my way, <coughs> I will want them to go through some of these things before we be able to support them. Because they have not given us as much support as we would have <laughs> wanted. <laughs> but happily, happily, United uh, UN Women started something they call the He for She's men that you know are supporting women, women. Yeah. and gradually the numbers keep you know it keeps increasing i was excited when i listened to uh, a program just a few days ago and it was a conversation just led by men and it was based on gender and equal opportunities bill and i'm like wow and after the conversation they were bold enough to pledge to support women and they didn't just pledge they endorsed yes so we are getting to that point. We have men who will be speaking for us. Who is not feeling the impact of, you know, economy, and poor health care, bad roads, you know, things like that? It's because these men do not understand certain areas of governance. It's on that note that I'm going to have to thank you very much, very friend, for your time on the program today. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you so much, sir. That's today's episode of the program. Thanks for watching. We would like to know what you think of the issues raised by this conversation. Our social media handles are right there on your screen. You can also listen to this and previous episodes of the program via our podcast. Please visit our website, channelstv.com forward slash podcast to get started. I am Ladi Akiridu Luale. Goodbye.